On the strength of this resemblance, some writers have concluded that the Savonnières were descendants of the Araucanians. This disagrees with the traditions of the Savonnières themselves, who claim to have immigrated from Florida. First driving from the island the males of a nation who were inferior to themselves in number and civilization. Moreover, the Indians of Cuba long had tradition of the wonderful land of Contio, or Florida. Washington Irving, in his Spanish Voyages of Discovery, says, The belief of the existence in Florida, of a river like that sought by Juan Ponce, was long prevalent among the Indians of Cuba, and the Saquiques were anxious to discover it. Geographical conditions would also favor the theory of the Sabonies coming originally from Florida. Evidence of an earlier race in Cuba has been discovered in the caves of the eastern part of the island. Skulls differing greatly from both those of the Sabonies and Caribs have been found, as well as stone implements which most authors agree were not used by the Sabonies. It is probable that the Sabonie tradition of their coming originally from Florida is correct. In the time of discovery, Cuba was divided politically into 30 different states as follows. Sabanek, Cayahaya, Manibon, Bani, Barahayu, Sagua, Baracoya on the north coast, Hanamano, Wage, Guanahaba, Mayon, Omapai, Guanaros, Quebe, Kukanayan, Makaka, Boyuca, Bahatequiri and Masi on the south coast, Guanahami, Guanahuanaca, Marian, Habanya, and Canahuella touching both coasts, Macorahes, Calahon, Bayamo, Maye, and Cuayamaj in the interior. Each state was independent and was governed by a king or saquique who was absolute ruler of the nation, subject to no laws and holding the power of life and death over his subjects. This power was seldom used arbitrarily, the saquique appearing more in the role of a father to his people. The subjects of the kingdom were called tainos, probably signifying citizens or subjects. They were of different rank. The Naitans or Naitanos formed the nobility or commanding part, the Naboris or Anaboris, the vassals or laboring class, who were divided into different groups, each group under the authority or command of a Naitans. As a mark of distinction, the nobles wore the hair tied high up on the head and on feast days adorned themselves with feathers, gold shells, etc. The hair of the vassal was cut straight about the ears. The national laws were few and severe, theft being the crime most severely punished. The convicted thief was impaled on a large stick and suspended between two upright posts until life was extinct. As among many uncivilized races, most of the manual work was performed by women. Among the Savonniers, married men were exempt from agricultural presence, but assisted in gold washing, etc. They were obliged, however, to live separate from their families for some time before going on a gold hunting expedition. Los hombres casados iban en busca de oro a los ríos como los demás, pero se abstencian de la cohabitación y trato mujeril antes para que no se les turbara la vista. The primitive Cubans were of an amorous disposition, somewhat indolent. Polygamy was permitted, but seldom practiced except among the ruling classes. Promiscuous intercourses and unnatural crimes were ascribed to the Sabonies by the early settlers. Naves gave this as his excuse for the massacres of the entire Indian village of Kaunao. Their acts were very ceremonious, especially when receiving a visit from a neighboring Sakik. The receiving Sakik was borne forth in a litter, preceded by a number of women who were slightly clothed, and who scattered palm leaves before the approaching guest. A visit was always attended by great feasting, where nobles acted as servants to the visiting Sakik. During the feast, the women entertained their lords by songs and dancing. 
A number of young girls were always appointed to the service of a welcome visitor as a peace offering. They, in common with other West Indian nations, had a tradition of the formation of the world. Lukuo, God, formed the world. We know he made all things. He came from a country beyond the clouds, peopled by spirits and souls. The world was first formed without mountains or water, but under the influence of the sea, sunk, forming mountains and bringing fair water. Lukuo formed the first man of wheat. When he was finished, he touched the image on the stomach with his foot, changing it into two grand Lukayos, male and female, to whom nine divine offsprings were born. The first Num, the moon, was very proud and boastful of his brilliancy, but when Huin, the sun, was born and showed his shining face, Nun became ashamed and hid himself, only coming out at night when Huin is absent. The other offsprings were given charge of the elements. Quasima was chief of the Cheme inferior gods, who were the offsprings of Lukuo and the first woman. Lukuo lived a long time with his people and taught them the first principles of agriculture. Taking an old man aside, he buried a stick in the ground and told him to dig in the same place after nine months had passed. At the end of this period, the old man dug up the place as directed and found yucca growing. The Behik, or doctors of the tribe, exerted an important influence. They were charged with the perpetuation of the nation's history or traditions, which were taught to the children of the nobility in the form of songs which were chanted by them on feast days. The Behik was also at the head of their religion. Their prayers were directed not to the Creator, but to the Mapuya, or Bad Spirit their belief being, as God is good, it is not necessary to gain his protection. The devil is bad, and it is therefore better for us to adore and propitiate him, so that he will work us no ill. Their intercessions were made through the medium of the Cheme, inferior gods, of whom stone images were erected, and who acted as messengers to the greater gods. Each behik had his own particular Cheme, called Kohekthi, who was solely at the command of that special behik. The Kohekthi of some behik were regarded as superior to others. The Cheme also had charge of all natural objects, such as the springs, the rain, thunder, and dew. Diseases were very rare and also very violent among the Sibonyes. The Behik cured their followers by medical preparations of herbs and roots, together with magical symbols, and by blowing upon them. 